class on common errors in English. My name is Jesse Josh. Today we're going to be looking at a few more common errors and I'd like you to go with me on this journey. And if you haven't watched our previous videos, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Go back, go back, go back and watch our videos. Thank you. Like, share, subscribe, leave your comments, suggestions and questions. They are all highly appreciated. My name is Jesse Josh. All right. Few versus a few. Few versus a few. Now, both these words work with countable nouns. They work with countable nouns. A few means enough, while few means not enough. So when you say, I have a few um, boxes, I have a few boxes at home, you are saying you have enough boxes. But when you say, um, the children are few, you are saying they are not enough. You are not happy with the way they are, right? So a few is usually positive, you know, saying that it's enough. While um, um, few is saying um, not enough. Few, a few is saying it's enough, right? But, a f uh, but few is saying not enough, okay? When we talk about few, we are saying that it's a very small number. But a few means that it's enough for you to even give out, right? So if you say, I have a few cars in my garage, so you can have this one. So I'm basically saying, I have enough cars and I can give you this one. But if you say, I have few cars, right? I can't. You are saying that the cars you have are not enough for you and so you cannot give out, all right? So that's the difference, few and a few. They almost look alike, but no, they're not the same thing. They do not mean the same thing in fact. Fall back on versus result to. Fall back on versus result to. Now, we may have to fall back on using untrained staff and we may have to resort to using staff. Now, this result is not R-E-S-U-L-T. It's R-E-S-O-R-T. Now, the first thing you have to understand is that there is nothing like fall back on. Now, this may sound like, this may come as a surprise to you, but there's nothing like fall back on. You cannot fall back on something. When you say fall back, the word fall back is a noun, right? Used to talk about something that is to be used in state of an emergency, okay? But when you use the word resort, so I resorted to using um, Tenny instead of um, Timmy. I resorted to using Tenny instead of Timmy. We are saying that you had to make, you had to use something that was um, negative, you know, because you had no other choice. So in that case, when you use the word resort, you are saying that what you actually now used was not what you expected or what you intended to use. So um, um, you say, um, I resorted to using untrained staff. What are you trying to say? You're trying to say you used them because there was no other alternative. All right? Uh -huh. You cannot say you fell back on. You tried to fall back on. No. When you fall back, a fall back is a plan to be used in state of emergency. All right? Floor versus ground. Floor versus ground. The body was lying on the kitchen ground or the body was lying on the kitchen floor. The diff now, people use ground and floor anyhow. People, in fact, it's a very, very um, common synonym that people use, a very, very common one. Um, the floor is the surface of a room that you walk on. I'll take that again. The floor is the surface of a room you walk on. We saw your bag on the floor when we searched your room, okay? But the ground is outside the house. So what is the difference between a floor and a ground is that a floor is inside a building while a ground is outside a building. So where you walk on, um, outside of a building, right? Um, the road, you know, um, just outside, anywhere that's not a building, that floor or that thing you step on is the ground. But once you come into the building or into a building, the surface you walk on is the floor. 
So floor is in the building or in a building. Ground is outside a building. So um, it will not be right to say, we saw your bag on the ground when you are in a building. The right thing to say when you are in a building is, we saw your bag on the floor. All right? So that's the difference between floor and ground. If you always remember, like I'll say, and I've been saying in almost all the videos on common errors, no two English words mean the same thing. There will be at least one difference, a very, very tangible difference. It may not be so large, it may not be so obvious, but there's always a difference. No two English words mean the same thing. Just get that. If you don't get anything from common errors in English, just know that no two words in English mean the same thing. Their difference could be their spelling, their difference could be their meaning, which is usually the common thing. Their difference could be the situation or the context with which they are used. Okay? Uh-huh. So that's basically it. The next one we're going to be looking at, and we'll take it, we'll take, uh, we'll call it a day, is foot and leg. Foot and leg. What's the difference? Now, um, <laughs> people use this. Let's look at this example. I broke my leg while playing football. Or I broke my foot while playing football. Now, when you use the word leg, you are referring to every part of the body from your waist down. Right? But when you use the word foot, you are referring to that horizontal um, part of your body that you stand on or that you used to stand. So if you say, I broke my leg, we are expecting that your whole leg starting from your waist downwards, was affected. But if you say foot, we are, you are saying that the, the ankle, um, everywhere from your ankle, you know, forward, right, the ankle area, right, and everywhere to your toes and all that, those are, that's your feet. But your leg is the whole thing from your waist downward. But your feet is from the ankle area, you know, down. The lowest part of your leg is the feet, all right? But your leg is the whole part, basically. So, be careful um, so that you don't pass another meaning. Because if you say leg, it means a different thing. And if you say foot, it means a different thing. And that brings us to the end of today's class on common errors in English. I hope you've learned a lot so far. I hope that it has been informative and educative. Well, if you've missed our videos, kindly go back and watch our videos. Your comments, your suggestions, and questions are all appreciated. I'll see you in the next class. My name is... Jesse, the <music>